So the job, the work session is now in order for the Planning Commission. Uh, folks, you're welcome here to, you're welcome to stay here and listen. Uh, this is essentially a work session where we kick things around. Um, we don't take comments from anybody that's watching or anything like that. We're just here to work and explore things. But you're certainly welcome to. Maybe you Okay. We can, we can do what we want pretty much as far as I'm concerned with the work session. Okay. 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 Well, generally, we're here to uh, discuss the uh, northwest uh, portion of our um, work uh, schedule for the year and further if need be. Um, Lisa made a comment just beforehand that I thought made a lot of sense, and that was to start trying to get some boundaries uh, set and what we're, how we're going to approach this thing. I think maybe just maybe we've been talking for a long time about yes. you know, kind of what our desires are for this particular project. I, th I think I would suggest it might be time to maybe set a little bit more of either an outline for you know, what we'd like to accomplish or for goals for tonight's meeting of what our proposed next steps might be. Um, so that we can move this forward, I think, in a constructive way. Yeah, I think that was our intent for tonight, was to, yes. to, to Just put together a, a list of our goals, objectives, um, over the next several meetings. But I, I sort of threw out a six meeting thing. I don't know if six is enough or not enough. I have no idea, but it's just sort of guess and some, something to start talking about. And that's what we kind of uh, laid out at our last meeting. We right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> testing, um, testing. Yeah. That's what roll calls for, but we didn't need that tonight. So. Hmm? <coughs> we need to do roll calls? No, yeah. but uh, that's what helps with figuring out whether or not your mics are on. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah I, I, yeah, I agree. I think that's what our, our hope was tonight. And we've thrown out some, some ideas for the seven meetings. I have, I have seven, actually, from the next steps from the last meeting. So. Um, I don't know if that's a good place to start, but. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I had a list of uh, Senior Center, Rogers, the area plans, uh, cut through traffic, multifamily zoning. Those are some of the topic areas. Yeah, the, um, let's see, so, yeah, let's see, and I, me just a minute I'll pull up the document from I remember reading reading the article that you had uh, sent to everybody from you know what's going on in, in Lafayette yep there were some parallels that seemed appropriate mm -hmm. we're not the only people dealing with a situation like that although ours is obviously different yeah and I don't think uh, you know I don't think we can accomplish everything and in, in, in a few meetings but maybe oh, no. picking the top you know maybe See if we can figure out what the, the top issues are here um, that we're sort of facing in this area. Um, that probably has a lot to do with just the, the zoning and, and the types of uh, properties that can be built in this area, I think, is, is one. Well, probably. Do we need to sort of, uh, I don't know, I like <laughs> visual <laughs> kinds of things. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Do we need to, to uh, sort of identify what properties are affected by which ones are in concern when you say zoning we I mean, could we touched on that a little bit last meeting I don't um, know that we start there I think at some point yeah, we would potentially might have get to do there that. Yeah. but right. I think that I think the bigger goals then could inform more specific properties okay so. if we could identify what the hot you know what maybe mm -hmm. the top five and try to narrow that down to maybe the three top three things that are important in this area um, maybe try to figure out whether they're challenging and difficult topics or are they easy ones um, is it just the light switch? Uh, it's one of those I mean there could be some low-hanging fruit that might be easy to do and there could be some like the land use code that could be a lot more challenging to, to try to tackle but um, but yeah if we could get you know maybe pick right so I'm looking at your from. list here um, which is really helpful. Um, 
I'm wondering which you would consider kind of the easiest ones to pick off. Yeah. So I know the, the cut through traffic is huge for everybody on Coal Creek and, mm -hmm. um, and the neighbors seem to be amenable to at least thinking about the idea of doing something about it. And the board, I think, or the transportation committee, I think has it on their agenda for next meeting. So that could be low hanging fruit and it could be easy to, to knock off. Um, and then I think we're getting into um, unfortunately the, the the more the more challenging area mm -hmm. of what can be built in that neighborhood um, even on infill just basic infill lots right what's what we're facing with um, the, the, the way the land use code is written today and the Maple Street homes are just a good example of the maximum type of, of home you can build there and then probably even more challenging is the fact that we have multifamily zoning and we want to have discussions over the next few weeks about whether there's anything we can do about the the way the the, the area is zoned currently um, I think there's some building permits being mm -hmm. requested for one of the parcels right the uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, Fourth and William. yeah have they yeah. pulled those permits uh, they've submitted permits I don't know that they've been issued or, okay yeah. and um, um, and then you know we have that light industrial area does that make sense and you know, some of these boards obviously can have to get involved in and staff and everything else so that, that I think that's a bit more challenging um, and then we have the undeveloped parcels that are that are kind of sitting there there's 76th Street there's pads in the marketplace there's a realignment of Marshall Road that was brought up in the uh, discussion around the um, RTDs uh, transit oriented development and uh, uh, Rogers Farm, of course, uh, <coughs> as well. So, those are then those are probably the big. That's that's the big, mm -hmm. ugly, difficult, challenging thing to to work on. So, it's an awesome opportunity. Um, I just think that the scope of it is is challenging um, because everything's so interrelated. Yeah. And I'm curious to know. Um, I don't have a solid understanding, I think, of kind of the ability to rezone private property. So I know the city or towns have some authority to kind of legislatively rezone, but I don't know, I know that those are generally on a more broad scale. And I don't know, I don't know, Stephen, maybe you've thought about this, kind of how that could be, is this scale too small to, um, think about rezoning from RM to RL would that cross the line into or is this possible for kind of a, a legislative um, I think that that's a conversation that I mean it's a tricky one because of the I think that's the smallness of the scale makes it a little bit more uh, maybe even difficult because uh, it's a handful of lots if we're talking about the industrial zoning uh, residential medium density. I, I just think that that's kind of one, one of those things that will need to come down from the board but there's probably different ways one could tackle the same objective without mm -hmm. rezoning right. but uh revising development uh, standards yeah and things like that typically I mean well typically even if you were to I mean at least based on what I recall from graduate school because I have <laughs> not experienced the rezoning personally uh, you you basically kind of um, you set a time frame for that use to kind of expire or whatever, and then uh, at, at a certain point, you know, it needs to go away. But uh, that's, I think it's a little bit trickier, and there's a lot of case law involved. So I would, you know, rely more on Hillary or somebody yeah, to come in and give us some guidance on, yeah. on, on that route, if that's something that's actually being considered. I think that, you know, if we want to look at the zoning stuff today we could do some sort of exercises to you know just get our heads around what uh, where the zone districts are where they differentiate and then what uses are allowed and what development rights are potential if, if that's mm -hmm. the objective but you do have a, a list of mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to start with traffic or if you want to start with zoning or if you want to start with you know what's you know with a three-mile area plan what can get annexed in there's it is a big scope I agree mm -hmm. with that yeah. part of it so well, and the the um, well, and that's a goal today. I think just to try to bat this stuff around, and I think we're going to have to break apart the the land use issues, the zoning, and 
um, uh, existing code for infill parcels and, and how those would be handled. And then I think the zoning is probably a different item, um, whether we can or want to tackle that. How would that be a different item? I'm well, curious you have, well, how you. Well, so, I mean, we've, you've, got, you've got light industrial and mm -hmm. multifamily, which is very important. I think it, that okay. needs to be an item that we need to address. But then we have the land use code for single family development that is just so. So when you say land use scope. code, you mean you're you're thinking specifically like for single family development? Not in, yes, in, in, the, in the in okay. the right, right. Okay. In, I'm sorry. Yes, no, that's okay. I'm just yeah, trying yeah, to clarify. Yeah. Yeah. Where in the single yeah. family development area, okay. um, addressing the land use code for that, so that we don't end up with a neighborhood full of maximum build mm -hmm. uh, homes in the area. That's, so I think that's that feels separate to me than dealing with the zoning issues and. But then, yeah, the zoning issues, if we do maintain multifamily zoning, you're right, the, the land use code would, could come into play there because mm -hmm. it doesn't really fit for the way at least this parcel has been sold. It it's, makes it really challenging to put together a nice plan mm -hmm. when you're trying to just put a few townhomes on a acre or whatever that is, lot. Uh, so. I think, I would think looking at kind of the single family development standards is something that I think we could reasonably approach, you know, as far as what might be an appropriate height, what might be an appropriate, you know, what are the setbacks, is maybe a, you know, greater or lesser setback, you know, appropriate. I think that's something that I think as planning commissioners we can easily get our arms around um, as far as what might be more appropriate. Yeah. So I think that's something we certainly could um, make some recommendations on. Yeah. And then there's this other sort of, I don't know if it's a nebulous, but there's there are a lot of things that go on in town that we look at and kind of shake our head, just don't understand whether they fit. I almost kind of want to pick on, on a few things and, yeah, like you what know, you, can you give well, an example? You know, we've got, a, we've got a little house that, that now has a, a two-story um, combination garage, apartments on top three foot it looks like less it looks like it's less than five foot setbacks on either side of, of this oh, wait, building no, I think I remember this building wait, we went yeah. back and looked at it yeah we walked just, through the alley yep, was yep, to yep, that's right. sitting back there that, that we were just, surprised that the gate was sitting right yeah just line seems or really like really odd and and I um I, I mean I'm, it may be very much to code I don't know but um, mm -hmm. be curious um, other things is there's um we don't enforce, and I'm not sure what our, our um, rules are. I, we're not under an HOA. Nobody in town wants to be under an HOA there. But well, we have code enforcement. Like we but have zoning, yeah, we have property maintenance stuff, right? Yeah, there's the, property maintenance stuff the, that just isn't going on. We notice right. that people are coming in and building homes and just putting all rocks down, right? We've got a couple of homes that they just did zero, zero, zero landscaping. Escape. Like not, not, no, not zero escape, zero <laughs> landscaping, period, rocks mm -hmm. across the entire lot. That's, that's tough, an interesting. You know, that's an interesting that's discussion, right? It is, because right? then, do you want like where? Where is that line <laughs> yeah, where it's exactly, like you have to exactly, do this, but then exactly. how prescriptive do right. we want to get? Exactly, exactly. So that's tough, but know. it's you know you yeah. you you have people coming in here who are going to build rentals, right? Because it's mm -hmm. you know it's close to close to Boulder, you know, and they're looking purely to rent homes out here, and so they make them as as low maintenance as they possibly can and then all of a sudden the, the residents, residential area starts to look not all that great you know mm -hmm. so um, so uh, you know those are like I said that's a little, a little more sort of nebulous area but uh, but what is our code what is our code what what can people be doing are we enforcing it should we be enforcing it mm -hmm. uh, right now I think it's uh, neighbor complaint based right it's complaint based if there's a problem I think some things are are, are managed I think weed uh, I think Reggie looks at Height of weeds, but that's a little random too. I mean, we were a little too high this last week, you know. I mean, with my knee, I haven't, I haven't, I didn't get the grass cut for two weeks because I couldn't really walk around, and all of a sudden I'm looking, I've got grass that's, you know, in one part of my yard that's, you know, foot and a half high. But so there's, you know, there's that whole code enforcement piece and what what you can and can't do in town, um, mm -hmm. and whether we want to make recommendations around that. So. It seems like we have a tangle of issues here. So, sort of well, like it is, a yeah. Guardians, not only. We don't have a sword to swing that we can slice through it necessarily. I think we just yeah. have to pick, pick, at the, pick a piece of it and yeah. <coughs> try to work it. 
Well, if we can get down the, I mean, if we can just get the list down, right, that, that, and then make some decisions about what we want to go after. Right. I think that was the point of this meeting. I, don't, I didn't think it was going to be a five or ten minute deal. I figured we'd have, yeah, to, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. have to try to get as much of this stuff out on the table and, and you know. I think you mentioned once before, maybe it was on the tour about variants or waivers. Yeah, or that came up too, yeah, in our discussions. You're right. Yeah, we had these discussions around, um, you know, is there some leniency that we could have with variances, right? So there's some things that people could do that, you know, we don't allow them to do now. Um, what yeah. do we want to do with this town? Do we want to allow, as somebody said, you know, if you got two lots, you want to put a carriage house on and rent it and own both parcels, you're allowed to do that. You know, people are doing it already. You know, there are people who, I mean, I know that that, I mean, it might be for family, but there are there are multiple residences that are showing up in, in different areas uh, in these parcels. Do we want to allow some flexibility there? Uh, our our house and a couple other houses, are, we, were, we were built in 1900 when the setbacks, I don't even know that they had front setbacks were even defined, but you know, our home is yeah, no. <laughs> 18 feet from the, from the road and I've got a three foot porch and I can't come down here and put up, I can't put a six foot porch roof across there, right? Because it's, it has to be a hardship right in order to do that because I'm too close to the road and 25 foot is a setback now so the second you touch the structure you can't you know you have to meet the existing code and so do we want to allow some flexibility for these old homes to, to be able to do reasonable upgrades uh, to make them look nice sure. and, you know that's it yeah I mean I think you could you could take a look at the variance criteria to see if you know um, there's the opportunity to provide more flexibility in there and I think a lot of those you know it's kind of open to interpretation as far as what constitutes a hardship and maybe the fact that your home was built you know in non-conforming you know that is your hardship therefore you know I mean, well you it wasn't the interpretation we got but no, yes, I, know, I hear but, you, you yeah, know, yeah so so how do you create flexibility around right. that so that the the, the, yeah. the board of variant board of variance is what, what so what's board that of board? Board, of board of adjustments board of adjustments right has some guidelines for you know being a little more flexible in mm -hmm. homes that were built before you know these codes were in place I don't mm -hmm. know, so. So the list keeps growing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just. Um, we want to. And some of this has to be. I mean, we also want to engage the residences, right? The residents mm -hmm. uh, of, of of this area. So this isn't 100% for us to define. I mean, we we may have a, you know, if we have a um, uh, meeting three was is bringing the residents in. I mean, that list may get prioritized totally differently, and two or three or more things might show up on that list that. You know that, that people in town are more interested that are uh, that are interested in. So um, I think I can define a. Obviously, we've just defined a half a dozen of them, but mm -hmm. others may come up as well. So. Well, I think maybe one of the starting points should be, um, as a group, if we want to make a recommendation, um, to try and tackle these holistically, maybe on a bigger scale through the help of a consultant, you know, and look at this more broadly. Or on the flip side, do we as a commission want to tackle these? And I think if we kind of did it as a commission, I would suggest considering focusing on these one at a time. You know, recognizing that these are holistic and that we may need to adjust some of our previous decisions as we go forward. But I think just having watched us kind of um, navigate this, I think if we don't kind of break them off focus in on one at a time or we might not get anywhere That's true. so um, you know and, and maybe potentially starting with single family development standards might be a good <laughs> kind of test run for us because it's something I think we can get our heads around we can get our arms around there's not that many standards that really come into play mm -hmm. um, it might help us set some kind of frameworks for how we do this so that those are kind of what I see as maybe two realistic options for moving forward I don't know if you guys have other thoughts, you know, and, and you know, keeping these priorities in mind, but actually, you know, kind of breaking them off one at a time and yep. carrying the ball forward a little bit. Well, and the other approach is to think about what what's the highest priority from the likelihood of um, something taking place right prior exactly. To exactly exactly right yeah so is that okay a multifamily sitting there are there people licking their chops wanting to come in and do multifamily because it's available mm -hmm. is it that the 76th street parcels are going to get developed or is it that you know transit oriented development is going to jump on this in the next six months i don't think they are but just mm -hmm. as an example what are the mm -hmm. 
What do you guys see as the highest priority? Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, and I, I don't know that. You know, and the multifamily has me nervous. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. but I mean, I, I don't know. That's it's most of that land is owned by, by various Kuffner families or the trust, and there are some other owners I think scattered. But um, so I don't know if we have any idea what what could happen in there. Um, the the I think the resulting parcel ended up that way because John because of John Kuffner's death I think is why that ended up getting separated out so maybe that's an anomaly maybe not um, I don't know there's there's you know a group that's looking around at these parcels the um, you know over on the south side of the creek um, the house that burnt down and um, John's old house and those trailers were all bought bought by um, I don't know the name of the LLC but. You know, Larry Larry Abrams is involved with that group, and he's he's been talking to people just about, and they've been picking up parcels and wanting to build stuff, and so, um, so that seems imminent, you know, in a lot of ways. So, and that's along Fifth, or where? Well, there's you know they've got South the, the yeah, <coughs> yeah. Okay. There's um, so and that's all single family. There's not a whole lot to do. Mm -hmm. um, there's Except build big homes, yeah. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, potentially, right? Well, that'll be butting up against the, the development, town center development. Oh, and the, uh, he's well, talking on the other side. So he's talking in the RL, right? Yeah. There uh, should be a pointer in yeah, this box. And I mean, I was, before I, before I got on the planning commission, I saw some of the ideas that were being thrown, oh, that's up to you, that were being thrown around by one of the design people that they had. You know, and they're, you know, I don't know what they would actually be able to pull off. That's good. Yeah, there we go. um, let's see. So this is, oh, it's, well, yeah, it's, it's actually right there. He's got his mouse on it. So that's one. And then where's, uh, as you come around the corner on, si is this second? Yeah. And let's see, you come in. Is this, that's, yeah. is that the bridge uh, right there. What is it? This is the bridge right here. Well, that's second. the bridge. So coming down. That's the bridge. Okay, so right here, these mm -hmm. these mobile homes are coming off. Uh, one of them came out of town uh, just this weekend, um, and I think those have been sold. Um, so it's likely that those will get built right into mm -hmm. into something. So that's the infill stuff that you know, they they could build a Maple Street home. You know, again, maximum size that they could could build. So. Yeah. Um, <coughs> You know, I, I think trying to tackle the, the, the single family housing issue is more pertinent. Um, I think the, the light industrial zone properties around town, I mean, they're, one is RTD and the other one has an operating business on it, that storage facility. It's just that one next to Founders Park that seems out yeah, of place and well, nothing. Yeah, I mean, Dan is living there. I mean, I, you know, but if Dan dies, something will happen. I mean. That, that'll instigate that'll instigate things somebody mm -hmm. will rezone that at some point right probably I, yeah, would imagine. I would imagine I mean there's nothing you can I mean we've talked about this it'd be really hard to do anything with yeah, that you wouldn't yeah. put a restaurant there or no something of that nature it's <laughs> and in the meantime maybe you know it's more of a property maintenance code enforcement yeah yeah you keep, know keep the grass down yeah so, so I, I think yeah you talk tackling the uh, the the land use code the single-family development and setbacks and things like that yeah to get that ball rolling because with the town center development coming <coughs> to fruition uh wonderland homes just opened up uh, uh, uh showings by appointment only on the townhomes they're building over there so you know the the, the cheapest land that developers can find is going to be an original town yeah and so i think to get these single family developments and the setbacks and those those rules in place so that we don't end up with a Maple Street all over town, because that's what they'll do, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you know the <coughs> the uh, was it the six duplexes, four duplexes that are planned for that uh, that one area that's in the building department. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's just a uh, a cash cow for an investor, right here, yeah. and that's that's where all the cheapest land is 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 in the original town. Yeah. And so those investors are going to keep coming until it's saturated, until it's full. Yeah. How many? How many? Uh, three buildings. Three six buildings. Units. Two six buildings. units. Six units. So three duplexes, yeah. but six units. Yeah. Three two-story duplexes. I think so. You I think? Mean, yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since I looked at those plans. Sure. <laughs> okay. 
So, you know, where we're most of, I think, uh, original town is single-family homes. I, I would rather see more single-family homes. I think the residents would rather see more single-family homes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, and how you, yeah, it's, it's, um, and you potentially could look at the development standards, you know, when we're looking at development standards, because RM, you can build a single family house in RM too, mm -hmm. you know, so sure. I think if we're looking at the development standards, rather than like getting away from rezoning property, I think we more reasonably have the ability as a town, and again, Hillary or Kendra might disagree, I think we more reasonably have the ability to revise some of the zoning code standards, like height and things like that, than we do to say, you know what, you've lost your ability to do multifamily, but you know right. but you can do it under these parameters still and maybe we're looking at you know decreasing the height and and I think if we're doing it I think it makes sense to do it for both RM and RL I think it's really interrelated and sure. um, so it doesn't necessarily you know solve the problem of you know if, if you <coughs> want to see multifamily in the area but I think you could that could be a good first step to take a look at it that way yeah and I wouldn't mind looking closely at RM and mm -hmm. seeing what's realistic, you know, in, in that area with, you know, as soon as you get into a larger development, then you're dealing with, with different requirements, right, than mm -hmm. you are with a small parcel, right? Yeah, I don't remember the standards and, enough. Uh, I need to look at it. Yeah, I'm glancing at them, but you know, all of a sudden it becomes a little more challenging. You have buffers that you have to deal with yeah. and um, just, yeah, it's... Right maybe there's not a problem right there's a possibility right mm -hmm. it's, it's, but we just have to understand it a little more closely so yeah so yeah i do like the idea of just you know looking closely at the development standards and land use for for rl and like i said rm i think that's fine with maybe the folk the priority on rl uh, and, um, and so it, as we look at these things we would take them up and make them recommendations to the board of trustees yeah, and it would be nice if we could find, you know, a town that's done this already, right? I mean, there's, we're not the only old town around, right? Is anybody else? Lafayette's looking at it. I don't know how far along they've come, but, mm -hmm. you know, are there any towns that have, that have done this? Or, or does mm -hmm. Stephen, do you know what some obvious choices are? You know, I think we know that lowering the, the building height limits the ability to put a towering two-story, right? It makes it harder right. to do that. Um, you know, lot coverage being changed from just the foundation of the house to all look at an FAR rather than yeah or yeah I think there's a lot of different ways to do it I mean I think yeah. you could look at you know kind of a bulk plane standard which talks about um, kind of relationship of mass you know next to appropriate adjacent properties mm -hmm. so you can't mm -hmm. build you know a big wall right up to your setback that you right. need to scale it back as it yeah. you know as it goes taller you could look at kind of a floor area ratio which accounts for kind of all finished space on a lot mm -hmm. you know so that Again, I think there's a lot yes. of different ways that that you could approach those, and I think a lot of you know there's well, multiple well, ways to get I think some results. Okay. Well, we have two planners kind of sitting here. <laughs> I mean, can you? I mean, is, is, is you know could it be that easy with you know between you guys talking to us about what our options are and mm -hmm. you know what? I'm pulling up. I'm trying to pull up what the code is, and um, I, I mean, I go ahead. I can pull up the code. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you guys have specific questions, but I just wanted to look at the height and bulk and setbacks and stuff just uh, to refresh my memory. And if we're not careful, we'll probably head down this rabbit hole now. We pro probably ought to make sure we at least get our list done of. of yeah, do you guys want me to <laughs> pull up a <laughs> Word fair. document yeah. and make the list first, and then? Sure. Yeah, do you want to do that? Which wanna, is, and if we have time to maybe dig in a little bit to, to one of them, I, I mean, I think we're coming to some. Agreement. I don't know if we got head nods over there. Is it also possible to get a copy of that pre previous map that you had up with that? Uh huh. Just to clarify one thing, when we were talking about the process, are we talking then about doing the land use, coming to some agreement, and then submitting that to the town, or doing all of these and then submitting it to the board? I would recommend kind of submitting to them as we go. Yeah, Once we kind of, okay. let's wrap up, you know, maybe one of these first ones, submit a resolution of a recommendation with, you know, what our proposed changes are, get some feet. I think it's a good to kind of check in with them. Hey, do you guys like the direction we're yeah. going? Okay. Are you guys comfortable with us doing this and well, making these before we kind of go whole hog? Yeah, we're okay. chipping away at it this way yeah. by doing 
knock off one at a time, so to speak. Yeah, just from experience, this stuff takes time, you know, too. And right. I think if we tried to get all of it done, it, it would. Right, and some of it is time sensitive. I mean, a little yeah. more time sensitive than the other. So yeah. I think as we propose as we go, that's. Well, and, and maybe even if we have the list that the Bob put together as part of it, and we can go when we submit our first one say, here's the other things we're looking at. Is there any priority to these um, as we're trying to prioritize which ones to do next? Maybe, maybe some input from, yeah. the, from the board might help too. So. <laughs> Alternatively, you know, we could, and I don't know that you guys are saying that, you know, we could recommend or go back to the board and recommend, hey, you know what, we really would like the guidance of, you know, some design professionals and see if they'd give us some budget to work with that. Could slow down the process, but um, the result you know, might be, might be better informed if we have, you know, some different types of analysis and outside of, you know, yeah. recommendations. And not that Steven's not the very best planner in the whole entire world, but we all have a lot on our plates and things, right? So yeah. just an option to you. And, and no it sounds like that's No not. one's ever called me that, Lisa, but thank <laughs> you. Um, anyway. Well, part of it might be just seeing what we come up with and seeing what the neighborhood thinks of it. Mm -hmm. Whether we agree it's enough, and if there's a concern, then we can bring in a consultant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could also um, ask the board. We could potentially plan this for a little bit. We could come up with some proposals and recommendations, and then maybe schedule a study session or a work session with the town board. Mm -hmm. And that way, we could dialogue with them a little more um, about, you know, our proposed changes and why we came up with these recommendations, and get some. I know you can't really get direction at a study session, but. Then it could be turned around via an ordinance through a public hearing. Yeah. And we can just let them know more more succinctly what we're thinking of. Yeah. And why we're so concerned. Uh, those are the ones that I heard you guys say. Yeah. So have at it, tell me to add more, tell me to edit, and then we can uh, order them in priority if you want to. Um, the ULI TAP study results, I think that was okay. one of the other ones, right? That, the, the ULI TAP recommendations yeah. for the TOD and stuff oh, like that. The, the marketplace? Yes. Well, yeah. 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 Or however we, however oh, we, we call Marshall that. Road, yeah, oh, sorry, you had Marshall Road realignment. Yes, okay. That sort of falls under that. Right? Yeah. We can put them together if you want. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. probably yeah. makes yeah. more yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Commissioner McCool, I think that's and and um, I think that's the way to go is not not to change necessarily the 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 development standards that are on the books now, but to, to lay them out more clearly for these developers when they do come into old town, original town, that there needs to be you know, more landscaping to things, there needs to be more setbacks, there needs to be the the stepped uh, the step back as you build higher you need to move in. Mm -hmm. as opposed to building a 20-foot wall, you know, five feet away from somebody else's house. <clears throat> Things like that, because that, that will maintain the character of original town, and that's, that's what we're after. You know, mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't want original town to come up with duplex, 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 duplex all over the place and lose its character. Yeah, and there's a risk it's going to lose its character, right? I mean, so the, you know, a lot of these homes are, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've added on to our home, and it's, Probably nice, and somebody probably like to buy it, but you know, maybe they'll go. Gee, there's a double lot, you know, big corner from the park, and it's great bit, mm -hmm. you know, build a nice big home there, right? So it's it's hard to say. You know, we're not we're not looking at protections, but we are dealing with lots that are, you know, 50 by 140. They're they're narrow lots, so they're not. You know, doesn't look good when you go build a home like a Maple Street home, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be like the, but 75 or 100 of those in town. And, mm -hmm. Nobody's going to really like that neighborhood, right? So, design, you know, just developing standards that make sense on a 50 to 100 lot, providing some flexibility for people who want to do double lots, right? Because we, we've got to address people with double lots, and people with single lots. You know, we're built, we, I mean, we, we, um, we combined our two, so we're currently um, on, a, on a, a, a double lot, but as a, as a single plot, right? Um, we're going to have to address that too and what, what that's about to look like. So, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I didn't think right, about that. Because there's a lot of that in town. Mm -hmm. you know, there are people with three lots, you know, I've, maybe even four. Because right? 
Because our code allows you to build over those platted lot lines, right? You don't have to subdivide. Uh, we subdivide. No. We or do you have to? Do you know? What, do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you have two lots, you I we mean, don't. You don't have to replat, do you? Or do they have to replat? It depends on what they want to do. They okay. want. I mean, if you have ownership of two lots, you can come in and develop. Right. Regardless of where the lot line, like the old platted lot line, is. That's what. Yeah, okay. Uh, so there's. I mean, that flexibility within original time, and then similarly, if you come back and you want to knock it down and have two developable rights, you have that then you possibility okay. too. Like yeah. without having to go through a formal. Without I mean, having to subdivide. Yeah, without having to go. I mean, you basically need a new plat, but it can be administrative rather than having to go back to the board. Whereas typically, if you're creating a new lot quote unquote a new lot then you do have to like any additional density would have to come back for, to planning commission and the board but the the thought being is that we it was plotted that way mm -hmm. that density is there it's just mm -hmm. it's more flexible than if you were you know in rock creek in where it was one you can't just whatever. subdivide that lot yeah okay so. and again I, you know i'd like to hear what our neighbors have to say what they're interested in doing and you know, there's neat stuff that happens and old town you mm -hmm. look at Louisville and the, just all the infill building that goes on in there and parts of Boulder where you know there's lots of neat stuff going on we, we may or may not want I you know just be really good here with the neighbors are, are thinking so. so do we want to kind of prioritize this list as the next step is the list complete or is there yeah or is there anything we're missing I guess we could amend it over if we think of stuff too right so, yeah, there's some generalities that were in my list, you know, but being safe and livable, I guess, the, you know, the country traffic kind of is part of, part of that. <coughs> um, you know, the idea that superior marketplace is maintained distinctly separate, right, so it's difficult to flow be between the two. Um, that's another one. Um, and there's the, the planning areas, the original town and fill, redevelopment, multifamily zoned areas, <coughs> light industrial. The existing parcels. We have 76th Street, I've had the marketplace, Rogers Farm, with an RTD. So, yeah, I think everything's. RTD's not on there yet. The transit oriented development. That probably falls in the Marshall Road alignment, ULI tap recommendations, slash yeah, I think so. DOD, right? Is that all? Is that all? Sure. Fit together. Uh, and, you know, I kind of, kind of want to throw one more thing in there that, that's a little more overarching, but is the, uh, I don't know how to phrase it, so I don't have to type this up quite yet, but this idea that we're potentially looking about dumping a whole lot of people in an area that doesn't have a lot of roadways in and out, right? So we're, we've, we've got Marshall Road, and then you have this other, you have the Sagamore neighborhood, Cold Creek neighborhood, Old Town neighborhood, mm -hmm. and if you go and build 76 Street parcels, and you fill in the marketplace, and the multifamily comes in, and the Transit-oriented de development gets done. Now all of a sudden we're screwed. We we just you know way, ways to get that many people in and out of there. It's just going to get really uncomfortable. We just too many people in this little area. And the question is, do we want that many people in this area, or do we want to try to put some numbers around this? You know, what how many people are here now, mm -hmm. right? And what would happen? I mean, are we okay with doubling the number of people by? building apartments and RTD and senior center at 76th Street and you know multifamily on, on 5th and 4th Avenues and, you know is double okay are we, you know are we generally okay with that many people coming into this this area is that reasonable right does that make it livable or triple it you know I mean mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what could potentially happen but it would be fair very fair question. good to understand that too so I think um, yeah what the yeah, impacts are the what, yeah Traffic as well. Huh. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the livability of this of that of this area. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the impact of the traffic. Yeah, you know. I would argue yeah. that growth is potentially possible sure. if you're addressing all of you know kind of the externalities that come from that, right? So if if we're making sure that we've got the right connections and that our networks can handle it, and that we're thinking through what those potential impacts are and we're providing for those. I just personally, and I don't want to necessarily assume that I'm speaking for the group here. I'm okay with our with our community growing. Um, just philosophically, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. But I think we absolutely have to think about the impacts 
and how to mitigate and design for those. Yeah. So that's well, where I come. That's where I come from. But. Yeah, no, I think in one of the, you know, on the Rogers property, connecting to the roundabout and then coming through the south side of everything. Mm -hmm will alleviate some of that, but then all of a sudden you're creating a lot more traffic coming across the Coal Creek Bridge on 2nd, which, you know, what is the capacity of that bridge, you know, for the amount of traffic that would be coming across there, and is it 2nd? Yeah. Um, Potentially. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those see, things I'm like... I, I, yeah. I have absolutely no doubt that the capacity is there, and that, that, that uh, Alex can get up there and... Tell us we'll go from A, 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 B, C, D, E, <laughs> and I don't give a crap about any of that. I really don't. Yeah. I no care about what our road infrastructure can handle. What I care about, what everybody should care yeah. about, is the livability mm -hmm. of having that many people mm -hmm. in that area. And yes, we can use grades to give us some sense of, okay, we have six grade D intersections. Yeah. Clearly, that's a problem. But that's not... That's you could not argue what we that care about, right? there's been engineers and planners that have kind of right. taken it, that and turned it on its head and said, you know what, a D intersection is actually way more livable because it's only measuring volume of traffic rather than like PEDs being able to cross the street. And so I think, right. this you is, know, yeah, like what do there's, we want this area to look like? Yeah, there's some flip wanna, sides to Right. I mean, you bring all these people in here and all of a sudden we're just screaming at each other every time <coughs> we go to the store or out to go to work or, yeah. and it's just not fun anymore. You're going to just change the whole <laughs> dynamic of the entire the entire area so it's, if it's, it's not about if it's not thoughtfully designed I right. agree uh, agreed yeah yeah and that's kind that's of just, yeah. but the problem is is we, we are more likely to build before thoughtfully designed very and true that's the scary part that absolutely we build by development by developers coming and saying I want to do X we can't react we need and to yes, think and we plan. are reacting we, yep. we, we've grown and it's been fine it's served us fine for the last 20 years but right now you know it's it's Developments on the rise. People are pouring into this state like there's no tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we, you know, they're, they're, we might just have to start saying no. I mean, literally, just figure out ways to be able to say no. We're not ready for that, or no, we're not okay with that, right? I mean, or no, we're just not ready. Period. Yeah, we have it's to like, figure yeah. it out. It's, it's, we've got to be, you know, this is a different world that we're being faced with right now, and this is only going to stay empty for so long. You know, I mean, yeah, people are going to hit Boulder, people are hitting Louisville, and all of a sudden said mm -hmm. you know, all this open land and I'll put all this infill in, in, in right here by the highway in Superior right Right. Which is kind of why I go back to the point of, you know, maybe a consultant to come in and help us navigate through this process isn't the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like someone who has helped communities navigate through these growth cycles in think holistically and have the time and the ability to do more analysis and, and make recommendations. Um, <coughs> Excuse you know. me. Something that I kind of keep yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, but that's not where we're at. Me, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I hear you, but it's a, it makes, it's a time frame, right? It's, it's like how right. long, every time we bring in a consultant, it just feels like it costs money and it takes a year and a half, you know, or two years to, to get the meeting scheduled and get all the people involved and get all the rents done and get all this done mm -hmm. and then they have these ideas and those ideas. And, and um, it gets, so I'm not opposed to it. It's just my, no, my, totally my looking back you. at our experience with, yeah. with consultants over the years. It's, uh, and a lot of times nothing comes of it. We get a pretty document that sits on the shelf. And, Very true. And, and I that sure can like happen. to have people engaged and connected. And, and you know, if you've come to these meetings and, and spent hours working on figuring things out, and the board approves it and it doesn't get to come down, you're going to have residents coming down here saying, I've been working on this for mm -hmm. last year. Damn it, we need to. Why, why isn't this happening, right? Why aren't we, why aren't yeah. we doing this, right? But, but, I, but you're right. I, I, you know, having experts like, can, can help us. Just find a nimble, that's the word today, a nimble <laughs> consultant uh -huh. that can help us do this effectively and efficiently and, you know, work with Stephen and, and, you know, together, not take over the process, right, but literally just be engaged as a, somebody to help us mm -hmm. figure it out, not do it, right? Not, not right. Not, not yep. try to walk out of here with some final design document product that sits on the shelf, right? That, that, you know, yeah. And do it. In, in the small chunks that you mentioned earlier that we can actually bite off and, and get done, right? Because it can also turn overwhelming really fast, too. Yeah. So with the, the, the future of the marketplace and the, the Northwest Superior area that we're looking at, the small area plan, you know, the ULI, the Urban League uh, study, 
one of the things that they're proposing, none of this is, is set in stone, but to push McCaslin further south, or excuse me, west, into the development so that McCaslin actually goes through the middle of the... Marshall. Through, Marshall. Yeah, Marshall. Marshall. Marshall, sorry. Yeah. See where the, the roundabout is, just above your cursor? <coughs> yeah, it was like something like... Yeah, it was going to come down, what is that road? Yeah, Marshall Road there. Yeah, we have to talk about it somehow. It's yeah. Like through here or something, or I don't know exactly where. Right, but they're going to bring Marshall Road a little further west so that Marshall Road would go through there, <coughs> which would give RTD a larger parcel to fool with over there by the BRT station. Um, and so that whole area would be high density apartments, townhomes, right up there next to the highway and the roundabout. <clears throat> coming in and off the highway there. Marshall Road would be a delineating point between that residential development that'll, Whole Foods I think will, will probably still stay there, but that whole residential development <clears throat> and the retail development further to the west where Costco and Target are. And so that whole area is going to be high density and commercial. And then... If we allow it. If we allow it. <laughs> I'm just saying, <clears throat> all the meetings I've been in, been in and people I've talked to, this is like what what I'm seeing coming down the pipe, and I'm I'm taking a step back and looking at a large picture of this whole northwest area, of saying <clears throat> high density residential there by the highway where the BRT is, mm -hmm. um, Marshall Road gets shifted over, um, there'll be uh, more high density in there that'll take up actually where Marshall Road sits now, <clears throat> and then to the west will be Costco and Target and, and commercial items. Sangamore Street will be the buffer. Sycamore. Sycamore, sorry. Sangamore, Sycamore Street will be the, the buffer between where, like, like we were just talking about, an obvious commercial, industrial, not industrial, but commercial area is, mm -hmm. begins and ends into a huge park. And then on the other side of the park is all residential. It's where Cold Creek uh, is now and the rest of the town, the original town of Superior. And so that Sycamore Street would be the the di divider between that commercial area. And I think that the, the traffic, the alignment of the traffic will be key. How we talked about, you know, maybe blocking off Coal Creek at Marshall or at, uh, yeah, blocking it off there. This is one of our killers, right? Yeah, blocking, <coughs> blocking that off there. You know, maybe sending everybody out 78th Street out to, out to Marshall and out that way or seeing if we can get a road cut through uh, in between like where TJ Maxx is and get a feeder coming down that way to hit Marshall so they can feed yeah. through the commercial area and get, give them, you know, people in Sangamore more of a direct access point to get to the BRT as well. That way they don't have to drive through original town and original town doesn't become a cut through. Well, and this is not an enjoyable street either. I, I, don't, I don't know what the hell we were thinking when we did this uh, other than to, to give more room to build. <laughs> but th this is just a horrible thing. Yeah, this weird curve thing. Here. But it slows you down. It, I agree. I, I, I know there were reasons. I, yeah. It was 20 years ago or 15 years ago, but you look at it and it's just, I mean, they made the road 20 miles an hour when they put it up. This is just so weird and narrow right through here. Right, you just can't come out of here at, at 25 or 30 miles an hour, which is reasonable, right, for a park on one side. I would agree. I mean, yeah. You can't do it on this road the way it's built. Oh, Bob. oh, is your mic on? Oh, my goodness, I'm sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we missed that great thought. Yes, <laughs> missed all that. that? Right. <laughs> 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 We're going through that again. Right, right. right. But, but, well, also, well, Matt, yeah, Sycamore is just not a great road for through traffic. I mean, it's just well, and, wasn't and built it. Well, and it can get realigned. It can get changed. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of development coming down the pipe. And I, I think to, to protect the access into original town, without restricting the residents' ability to, to leave and, and come back is is the key point. Yeah, and I mean, that's yeah, that's going to be Coal Creek, that's going to be Sagamore, it's going to be Original Town, it's going you know, to be these areas up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we want good traffic flow that yeah, encourages people to... But it, it's to all residential in there. There's yeah. no reason why it, it, it shouldn't be... It, you shouldn't have a problem crossing the street Yeah, on, on foot. I agree. I think Sycamore, I've, I've never thought of Sycamore as a problem. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, and that I, I go that way in and out of Target, and I like the fact that, you know, if I use that park, my kids use that park a lot. That, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, people are going slower. People yeah. are going slower, yeah. and they'll go across the street to Target, and I don't have to... I don't. That does not give me any heartburn. So mm-hmm. um, it, it is. It, it is. You can fly down Cole Creek. You can, yeah. right? Which I would argue the problem is more with Cole Creek than yeah. with Sycamore. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I guess depends on how Cole, you look at Cole it. Cole Creek yeah. Drive is is residential access. That's what we yeah. need to limit that to is residential access. Yeah, but yeah, that's again closing off Fourth is going to make it mostly residential traffic. Most mm-hmm. people aren't going to go around. You know, so but. that's going to be the other issue with Second though is when that roundabout does connect through the you know, oh, uh, property right into a second then all of a sudden that becomes a a way out yeah yeah and that's we were talking about that it, yeah there's yeah i know uh, uh daryl my wife uh, thinks that that could create a real issue of cut through traffic um coming in and going this way again i, I don't know where you yeah. go though if you block you off you can't make a Marshall left which there, is good so. right you can't turn on the marshall no but yeah. i mean you would come up and then turn left on cold creek so then you're yeah. running cold creek right. but then you got to come all the way up here if we close forth which makes it really a yeah. long way around mm-hmm. yeah. not that some people won't do it but right but yeah it's uh yeah but yeah there's just a lot of just again back to just generally planning this this area yeah. um with the development that's coming and what we're talking about is kind of protecting the nature of original town keeping it residential that's that's my point of bringing in the, all the stuff about the BRT and the possibly moving Marshall Road mm-hmm. is I think the, the design standards to have developers adhere to in original yeah. town and I think number two is the transportation because it's it's being abused yeah. you know original town is being abused by cut through traffic yeah and actually since you brought this up several months ago when we were talking uh i've stopped making that turn down cold creek <laughs> i drive around now yeah and i thought daryl <laughs> made a great point last night like just <laughs> educating yeah. right folks. education it's is like, huge hey, yeah. do you realize right. that's my I res- front yard I respect right, that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. and our house is only 18 feet from the street right yeah. it's like <laughs> <laughs> so am i hearing you guys say like residential development standards maybe first priority transportation maybe second priority is that yeah, yeah I, mean, I think the cut through traffic we're we're for, we're pushing that through transportation. Right. Yeah. And, and maybe planning commission doesn't necessarily need to focus yeah, on that. Yeah. Or we could comment on it too. Yeah. I mean, I that would be a that's that to me is a low hanging fruit piece, but okay. does the cut through uh, traffic uh, deal with the closure of Force Street? Yeah, I mean that seems I mean, like that the obvious, of, but uh, yeah, that's around? that's what what's being bounced around. Yeah, it seems like the easiest obvious yeah, thing to do, but I mean, just looking yeah. at it visually it looks, looks like that's a certain move to make. Yeah. Did it come off the list? Yeah. Oh, you're oh you're you're yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then okay. we can start numbering these. So. And you know, and I, I I know I know I'm in original town, and we've been pushing for that. But I mean, I think we're also talking about Cole Creek Crossing. They're they're dealing with this too. The mm-hmm volume of traffic coming up there the, the the trucks and some of the city trucks that come up and down that street and you know just it's it i mean they're they're already complaining and they've not even been in there a year right there's there's already concerns there so um and i you know sagamore is a little more protected in that regard um, so they're not really affected but this this entire area here coal creek crossing and original town are all kind of dealing with this yeah what I think is, as the future marches on, you know, we can push more traffic into the commercial area. Yeah. Those businesses aren't going to complain about that. No, no, they yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. Right. Very good you know, point. And we, I, yeah. we funnel everything through the commercial development. Mm-hmm. People will stop and you know, do their business. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's a great way to spin it, too. Yeah. I mean, you want to get traffic in that area, especially as it grows. Yeah. Right? yeah. Fill up that commercial space, increase the tax rolls. Oh, you know, another part to that list, uh, we brought up education. I don't know if that's really on there, but um, that's been being bounced around like Daryl's been pushing that around, this idea of of educating, uh, providing education through, um, um, well, through through our communication channels, through um, signage, through... um, of the neighborhood entrance what do you call those things the 
monuments, monuments, yeah, like we talked about on McCaslin and mm -hmm. coming into these neighborhoods and just ways to make it clear what whether you're in a residential area or whether yep. you're in a commercial area, right? Um, yeah. So I think uh, number three. Do you feel comfortable moving that way down because it is I just do. I'm good with yeah, yeah we can, we can, we can push do, that down yeah. right and even 76th Street properties mm -hmm. maybe I mean the comp plan addresses those right they um, do and they're gonna they come do. before they're gonna have to be a PD yeah. and, and yep. um, they're gonna have to go through the whole process yeah. they are and if that surface yeah. surface we can bring it up sure. and we yeah. can have a work <laughs> session around it and start yeah. bouncing That's it around, right, the, right the development standards I mean those guys can just go straight to the building department and get a building permit yeah. Right. Without coming through a, yeah, a larger exactly, process. So. Exactly. Yeah. I would argue numbers, the variances, the hardships. I don't know how many folks are coming in, you know, looking if that's if that's a big issue. I remember a few conversations here in the past or if, if some, you know, if that's something that and it seems like that's something the Planning Commission, I think, could could get our arms around. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, but I don't know how. I mean, I don't know what you're arguing. You know, do you see that? that as, do you see that as being something that is worth our time? Do you do you talk to a lot of folks? We I have not. Okay. So yeah. uh, there's been one instance I think of, okay. of a, a conversation about whether or not okay. somebody. Can there are people. Yeah, who just don't come either. I know one lady moved out because she couldn't. There was just little things she wanted to do, but it was against code, so okay. she just left. Okay. But. Well, that's the thing is maybe people aren't coming forward and saying would, it. it's not that yeah. it's not important. I mean, it's something that we we can definitely look into and yeah. I mean, I think we have more likelihood of affecting change with that than we do with like the well, undeveloped pad sites in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. or, sure. You know. And doesn't it sort of fall under the development standards? Yeah. Potential we could land lump it use. Into I mean, that. true. It kind of. It, I mean, it's almost a sub bullet under there because mm -hmm. we're going to be looking at that. That's a good. We're point. going to be looking at that code anyway. Yeah. yeah. And as we come across that kind of stuff, That's I mean, a good point. Vari variances are mentioned in there, mm -hmm. and we could choose to make yeah. those a little more lax or a little more tight or whatever. You know, I, again, I don't know what people are thinking. Um, That's a good point. Um, you know, going back to the transportation issue around the original town, I was reading through some of the transportation safety committee notes from their meetings, and uh, they were discussing Weldona and 88th Street and how they actually. Uh, uh, temporarily closed Weldona at 88 to see how the reaction would be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think we could do, you know, first Some steps of something changes. temporary like in original town. Yeah. Fourth Street yeah. closing yeah. off Fourth Street, making yeah. this uh, you know, uh, Cold Creek entrance here uh, only access to the town halls and the the, the other building over there, uh, and, and blocking it off and maybe having being an exit for town residents. But, but you can't drive in. Mm -hmm. so yeah, and I, I looked at some of that. Doing it temporarily too, yeah, it, just it's, to see how it affects yep. people and see what yeah. the street back is. Some barricades up for a couple months. Yeah, and yeah. see how it goes. Yep. There are some things that, that need to be thought about. It'd be worth talking. I, I've, I've kind of studied that whole First Avenue and Coal Creek and, you know, the ways we could discourage people from, you know, even that. But you know, how many people are coming into Town Hall? You know, if you come into Town, the problem is you come into Town Hall, you come into Conoco, and you want to go to the marketplace, you have to go through the neighborhood. There's right. no other way, right? And maybe once a circle gets built, I don't know. It, it's, people aren't going to go back. People aren't going to go up and around that circle. To, but they should. They should, but but they probably wouldn't unless you force them out, right? You could you you could do it. And I was kind of looking at that, yeah. but that gets hairy too. I mean, I think we're going to see a 75 to 80 percent drop in volume if we close for it. That's my guess. You know, I, you know, I, I'm because the you know the you know. People that are coming into Conoco, a lot of them are going back home. Some of them are probably going to go to the marketplace. Um, people coming into Town Hall are mostly probably going to go back to Rock Creek, right? Um, maybe they're going to go to the marketplace. That doesn't feel like a huge volume, maybe, but you know, so one step, you know. You're saying a lot of <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the volume is coming off of McCaslin on the Coal Creek Drive, then on to First Avenue into Target. Conoco. They, you know, you just watch it all day long, <coughs> and then either go into PetSmart or yeah. up to Target. This is, this is and what that's where I think that temporary closure would really help 
Yeah, let's this is, see this what is the numbers. Just, see what happens yeah, to the numbers. Yeah. You know, yeah. do they yeah. change at all? It's just a lot to do this. I mean, you're asking, mm -hmm. you know, another stop sign, another turn. <laughs> yep. to, people don't like to go past their destination, right? This, yeah. mm -hmm. this is clearly a nice, short, pretty drive without any, you know, but stop what, lights or yeah. And so the, if the we shut that cars. off, then this becomes a little friendlier. This this yeah. becomes a little better. And I, you know, I, I see things here someday, too, that, you know, making this comfortable, making right turns, double right turns right into, into the marketplace and double, we have double lefts now going into the town center and, and just, you know, really making this, and you know, worth going that way, right? It's just, not if we have double left, do we have a double left there now? We did for a while, we took it away there's, for a while. There's double I left. I never take it. But going north now. Yeah. There are, okay. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and it helps a lot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and the other thing was, um, if we close this off, you know, I, um, I sort of had this, this idea of, of, again, this is someday, but of extending this right lane all the way up, right? So that this, this is just a nice flow right out. I mean, what? Where are all these people going? They're going back home. They're probably going to Rock Creek, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the heavy use of this is, is, our, is us. And, and so people come down here. If you have a free right, you just go there. You just go there. You're just right out. You know, you're gone. Yeah. Nobody uses this damn sidewalk. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> there, there, there are lots of ways, you know, this, this can be brought back here and a nice trail right through here, right? And you can just have this nice, you know, well, we do have this. this uh, we're dealing, yeah, we're dealing with that detention pond right there. Um, and, but, but, you know. All that can be dealt with, I guess. But mm -hmm. you know, how do you how do you make it so that when you come out of here, this is a nice free ride all the way down, and you know that lane's just That'd all be the way awesome. open, right? <laughs> yeah, just you know, someday type stuff, right? It's yeah. hard that Dan, peds, pe you, peds can't cross. I mean, you're impacting peds though yep. if you give everybody a free ride all the true. time. True, that's but, true. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's again, true. you know, yeah, thinking, yep, yep, thinking yep, through yep, all yep. of it, but absolutely. We get like Boulder, and we start putting tunnels in everywhere. So. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, so. But you know, as as this builds, I mean, again, if you if you start putting in the transit-oriented development, all this, mm -hmm. you've got to start dealing with ways to move that traffic, yes. you know, comfortably through this area, or people are just going to get irritated and annoyed. Yep. So, but yeah. Well, no, I think from the the urban league study and, and the when I was talking to those folks about that, that was part of it. Where Marshall Road would come further west and kind of hook up with uh, Sycamore. And then curve to the north, kind of like around PetSmart. Yeah. So it's going to come through here, right? Yeah. And so then Marshall Road would continue west, and then past PetSmart, it would it would turn north and then hit that roundabout there. Somewhere like this. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of cuts through. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what. Yeah, there's a. You connect the dot Arby's kind there, of from the yeah. Sycamore Marshall intersection to that roundabout Into because that. street, <clears throat> yeah, kind of cuts through the mm. Arby's and yeah, um, yeah. These are just yeah. This is the Arby's right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Marshall Road would go on the west side of that large parking lot. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it would follow that road right there. Right here, right? Yeah. No, further west. Oh, even. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that. The from what I recall, the ULI was talking about it. Yep. What I have so it was down up. here. Okay. Yeah, I've got gotcha. it pulled up right here. It's yep, just like that. So you're kind of connecting. Yeah, I think just Marshall just in front of the space right So now. the so existing yeah, sycamore Marshall intersection Road makes some sense. Yeah. Yes. to the roundabout. Oh yeah. So okay. You, just you bring okay. more traffic yeah, yeah. right through yeah. the heart of the no, development, yeah. and so you're they're more likely to stop off and use the businesses. Yeah. But that that could connect to sac sycamore, and and create that that beautiful scenario you were talking about. Yeah, and because through roundabout right there, through. you're right. Yeah. Well, back to the list. Yeah, so the list is, I mean, we're getting there on the list, I think. So. Um, I would be happy to, um, for our next time we get together, compile other local codes for development standards for kind of the appropriate equivalent zone districts. Just kind of see where we fall with lot coverage and heights, just so we kind of have a thing to compare to, especially of our kind of neighboring communities. I mean, I think all of us kind of have a good idea of Lafayette's old town and Louisville's old town, and maybe we can do just kind mm -hmm. of a, I'll just make a spreadsheet comparison of some of the other neighboring communities for us to take a look and see where we fall, and maybe that can help guide um, what would be reasonable changes or 
whatever changes we'd like to see. Well, that fits perfect That's with meeting idea. two that we had down as just education and update on the area. So, okay. yeah, that works. So I'm happy to do that for, to send that out to sure. everyone for our next meeting. Um, we as well as the variance criteria maybe for other communities. It's easy for me to kind of gather up. Stephen, do you have anything you can bring to us in that regard? Sure. For the next I, mean, I can with certainly share, share with, I don't even know that anyone's that familiar with what our standards are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure Lisa's going to have that as the first column or whatever. Yeah. And then a comparison. I'll include Spear. I'm thinking but Lafayette, uh, Louisville, Erie, you know, sure. maybe just some of our neighboring mm -hmm. equivalent communities. Would it be reasonable to ask you to um, pull together, you know, maybe a, a highlighted version or, or to be just prepared to talk about the areas of our land use code that that um, would be impacted by these discussions? Would that be a too big of a job or what would that? I don't know that we're ready to. Just so we can see what the existing, so anything you're bringing to us related to building heights and mm -hmm. footprints and all those things, what, I'd be nice to see what what ours are? What ours looks like. I'll include kind of that on the behind. table. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we can go through it. I don't know that I and could anticipate without what looking I'm at what gonna do Lisa sure. provides. We'll do a table but, uh, that has each city and then what yeah, the setbacks are. Yeah, so Superior are is this, oh, okay. all these other, you know, so Superior what we are can existing. build. Okay. Yeah, all so right. it, then I think when we're just talking. We're talking front setback, side setback, height allowance, lot coverage, that type yeah. of standards, it would be a pretty basic analysis. Yeah. What... Yeah. I think you're getting at it eventually will help with uh, you know what can be done with medium density residential what could be done with uh, light industrial zoning that type of stuff if that if we get to that I'm happy to do whatever okay but uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's it's a uh, it's an interesting like people come in well, what can I do with my property well that's too broad of a question you know yeah. like because it, <laughs> it really is you know like it is yeah there are a ton of possibilities and yeah. but but as I think Lisa kind of uh, you know was getting to there's a ton of different tools to kind of address I mean but I think that what you guys got to start thinking about is well you know you people mention the Maple Street homes and they don't they don't like them you know but we don't we don't know why you know mm -hmm. I don't I mean I don't know why you in particular don't like them or somebody else that's mentioned it doesn't like is it the height is it the fact is it the lot coverage is it you know the the, the setbacks really I mean that's what I think you to, to be able to fix you know yeah. whatever we think the problem is we really need to understand yeah. what the what the result that we want to mitigate yeah. or change yeah. is well yeah i mean so. it's a wall of homes right next to you know home right. i mean like people are like looking down into people's i mean yeah it just it becomes uncomfortable right you know so, right, but, but so you're right the, it's different different reasons right that's yeah. the conversation though but i mean yeah. so there's different tools like whether yeah. or not you vary the setback so that it's not such right. a wall or whether or not you feel like you need like yeah, the plane type of analysis where you're, you know, you got a first story that is allowed to have a five foot setback, but if you sure. have a second story, it's step back even further. Gotcha. So those type of tools are kind of the. There's nothing in our code that requires that yet. Yeah. Uh, so those are the type of like other tools. Mm -hmm. Like I think after the right. first conversation of where do we land with the other communities, then we can kind of start talking about what what measures would address whatever issue we feel like we okay. want to address or whatever particular handful of issues. So. Okay. Doesn't it also get, it seems like it, it gets into number two, because as I'm listening to, I, I don't like those homes either, but it's, what, what do we want to do? And preserve, it's preserving character, but what does that mean? What is the character yep. of all, how do we define that? Because it would probably yeah. all have a different opinion of that, and, and the walk that we had was fantastic, because I liked the the old and when we got to some of the newer modern one it was like yeah boy it just doesn't fit here i don't know why we would let them but can we really restrict and that? do we want right. to do we want to regulate architecture yes you know? right. I mean, that's yeah, a yeah, tricky you, yeah, thing some communities yeah. do and some communities are like you know and that's yeah. i think you know again a community character issue yeah. do yeah. we yeah. and original town is original town because there hasn't been any regulations you know like <laughs> no, i mean right. there weren't right. any in place so that's the kind of the trick yeah. is that people come in and get upset because we tell them that this is the code you have a 25 foot yeah. setback and you know a new developer will ask well you know why is it 25 feet nothing's 25 feet from the front why do i have to be 25 feet from the front yeah. well that's yep. the code that's yeah. what you know uh, that's the standard unless you have a variance and there's no reason to give you a variance because you have a whole lot to develop you know yeah. so yeah. that that's where the the conversation kind of goes both ways so but i'm happy to chat and, and give you you know my perspective or history or whatever on any part of that and if you need um 
that's an interesting analysis. I was thinking about that as you were talking about the uh, uh, the industrial light industrial zoning. It's like what could possibly happen. We have these other provisions, and you kind of alluded to them with you know certain acreage or you know certain amount of units. Then the general development standards also come into play. So right. there's just different layers to. And that's why it's such an open-ended question. Yeah. But uh, we yeah. could start talking about it. Well, you got to start sure. playing scenarios, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you know, you just got to say, okay, well, what if they take that and they break it into four pieces? And okay, well, then they can build six. Well, we know they can build three buildings with 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 six six uh, units on it, and you know they could do that four times over, right? As as four different, you know, you can play out those scenarios to get a you know an idea of what people can do, right? You know, so, um, yep. And do we want to allow that? And how do we, how would we prevent it? And you know, mm -hmm. how are lots subdivided? And you know, it, 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 it yeah, it's going to get. Gets when I do my analysis yeah. too, I'll I'll pull in one of the things that will get pulled into that is kind of what um, max density for these zone districts can be. You know, like what the minimum lot area is. Some we have like some eight units per acre is the max density. Other communities would do mm -hmm. like, you need so many square feet of lot area or so many square feet of area per dwelling unit. So then we can kind of get a comparison to see, you know, what our RM is way, you know, could result in way more um, units or maybe not. Maybe we're, you it's, know. I mean, part of it is market driven too. You know, like you know. If, if people wanted to come in and develop like a triplex or a fourplex or something like that, that's not prohibited in RM zoning. But if they have one lot and it's 7,000 square feet, those are going to be some very small. Right units and that's right. not what they want so they end up falling to duplex and then and then you have your you know well what does that look like type of uh issue you know it's mm -hmm. going to be because they can be 32 feet tall yeah. and they have to have access and they have to have a garage and so you know and you have a 55 foot w wide lot and with duplexes they have third they have a uh, 10 foot side setbacks so you got 30 feet of a structure and 18 feet of that's taken up by the garage then yep. you don't have much of a a front of a home so yeah. there there's nothing in place to help control that it's just standards that have unintended unintended consequences as far as development goes sometimes very much so, so. and i also would kind of want to just share in my experience infill development is probably the hardest type of development to get done because every lot that's left over generally has some unique circumstance that doesn't fit into this box and so um i think we also maybe want to kind of keep in keep in mind this double-edged sword of like okay well here's the box we're trying to you know here's kind of the character we're trying to do um and i think you can kind of swing that pendulum too far potentially if we're um unless the goal is not to see development but you know being potentially um over regulated over regulated yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so i don't but, see that I don't see that we're going down that path. I'm just yeah. yeah well, and I, yeah, we're also a lot of our discussions are around um, you know protecting character of what's there. And I, I mean, we may get people in here who are saying, you know, no, that's just you know, let us do what we want. And let I it, know. It's I mean, maybe it won't go the other way, but yeah. but we got to bring people in to start to talk about this. I mean, because yep. mm -hmm. you look at a downtown Louisville, we're not downtown. We don't have you know little stores and shops running through mm -hmm. running through the town. But you know, all of a sudden, you've got nice narrow alleys. People are right building building right up the lot lines you know there's very narrow very narrow setbacks right mm -hmm. and, and and it's a cool character it's mm -hmm. it's neat it's just different right yep. and um and i'm not suggesting we want to do that in old town but you know that's you know, we may hear that as well mm -hmm. it could go as much the other way of of you know give us some more flexibility let us make this mm -hmm. more let, let me let me have two or three people living on our lot. Let me let me let me have a carriage house that I can rent out, or maybe two carriage houses on my triple lot or double lot that I can rent some houses out for people. And you know, I I just you know I don't know where it's I don't know where it's going to go. And then and then that creates its own character, right? So then, and, um, but yeah, and it, it's 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 going to be a tough nut to crack. There's no doubt. But, it is, and I think yeah. there's a lot of steps in yeah, yeah to it. That, that's yeah. why it's worthwhile cracking. Yeah. yeah. So and meeting three, so I don't know if this leads, I don't know, you know, right now I'd like to reevaluate our the meeting schedule that I sort of threw out there because it was just <coughs> really just a, a an idea, which was meeting one, which is define our initial draft and goals for the work and set a timeline. I think I'm okay with this list. Um, education and update is going to start happening in our next meeting. I think that will probably continue on as we need it to. Clarify what you mean by that. I'm curious. What's that? The education and update. 
Well, you're going to put together. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. thought you yeah. meant like we were going to be disseminating. No, no. This like is for uh, this is uh, oh, this would be. Gotcha. Um, I think it's it's you bringing that yep. together. I think if, mm -hmm. if we want to spend any more time, we've already had some of it, but okay. if we want to spend any more time looking at what the zoning is and what some of the zoning means, um, play out any scenarios that that can you know help us better understand what you can and can't do in this area right now. That would be meeting two. In the meeting three, we were, you know, I, I had inviting residents to come in and, you know, now we're educated. We've thought through some things. We've got a list of stuff we want to talk about and can we get a group of residents together to do that? And I, I've got maybe 15 or 20 on my list. I've got my, my campaign list when I briefly went to run for the board and bailed um, that, that I, I'm going to mail out to, you know, the people that are in Sagamore and Cole Creek and original town that I know and see if I can encourage them to, to come down you know and that meeting I would love to see as a as a work session as a work session to you know out there you know not up here at the dais and it's it, not not up here but you know let us sit around the table and let let it be participatory and and moderated in, in yesterday's um, um, meeting regarding um, you know 88th street and those places they had, one of the issues that came up was they sent out surveys and only well we've got 90 people yeah uh, got them so we have to make sure that we have a good delivery service of the invitation to come in and air their points of view and yep. what have you yeah I mean I think we need to hit all the communication channels that we have and and if you know people in Sagamore Cole Creek get you know if you want to send them to me I'll stick them on my I'm just I have a MailChimp list I'm happy to put them on there if you know anybody but also for you know people they know to reach out to them it works even better right so there are people if they're friends of yours then. do we want to push to close forestry i mean while we're mm -hmm. studying and compiling on all this other thing we can still conduct an experiment if we want yeah. i think conducting an experiment would be a good idea yeah. well we could, i mean we could certainly i think it might carry some weight especially for the next train is it is it on the agenda for the next transportation I haven't meeting to address agenda, but it is in july i don't know in what, or me in july i mean yeah, we could certainly topic is put together a quick recommendation that just says we'd be in support of a temporary closure of Fourth Avenue to see if it solves the traffic problem and yep. get that and maybe ask to have that passed on to the <coughs> Transportation Traffic and Safety Commission Traffic yeah. and Safety Commission and probably send it to them I, I mean, think the longer maybe. we can watch what happens and you know the more feedback it provides for us yeah yeah okay well then I could just make a quick yeah. motion to um, provide a recommendation to the board. Oh, we can't do that. We it's not a public meeting. Tonight, it's a work right? session. So we'd right. have to do that When's at our next, next meeting. meeting. Yeah. We could put that, we could make that an agenda item at our next meeting, yeah. we regardless could, yeah. of what's on Definitely. there. Yeah. Just so we can officially do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if, yeah, I mean, I don't know when, I, if you guys want to meet again uh, in two weeks, we can meet again in two weeks. We yeah. can schedule that for, to be able to make so that yeah. recommendation. You can also go yeah. to June transportation. June 20th. Safety Commission June 20th. and talk to them directly at their next meeting, however you want to do it. Okay. Um, I'm available. Happy to meet again. So June 20th is our next meeting? I'll make, um, I'll make myself available. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, we okay with this list then? And uh, are we okay still tentatively for maybe meeting three being bringing people I together? We're we not there yet. I don't know. I mean, I guess I would I would want to know what we're. I mean, if we're only going to be talking about RM and RL development standards, I feel like we'd probably be there. I don't think we'll be anywhere close to making recommendations on any of the. Oh, I don't want to make. I want three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. I just want to hear. Yeah, I'd want to hear what people think about you know one and two. You know, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, in, I, I think in a couple. I of years think I'd like him to see yeah. three through nine, but I don't want to. I don't think those are discussion items for. Uh, are you happy? You guys want to go ahead and? I mean, do you feel like this is the right order? I was looking at it, and I'm like six and seven. I feel like should be moved up to three and four. And sure. then, you know, yeah. because I, I just yeah. feel like if the marketplace that all of that is being looked at, you know, as part of the ULI, you know, I think it's. A, we would be able to take more action on those two items, and then maybe code enforcement move up a couple. And I don't know. 
Yeah, I could. You know, and I could even see code enforcement going up under number one. Well, yeah. Agree. yeah. Again, with, you know, I mean, it's all kind of yeah. Yeah. sort of it's stuff we're going to be looking at anyway. Right. Right. It's. Uh, yeah, code enforcement's tricky, right? Yep. I mean, we don't have. Well, it, it's a question of whether. I mean, I. I don't even know that I'm suggesting we need to change code enforcement. I'd kind of like to know what, I mean, from yeah, the education like side, I'd like to know what it is. Yeah. I'd like to know a little more about what we, how we, or if we even enforce mm -hmm. it. You know, right now I've sort of heard that it's, um, you know, complaint driven, right? So maybe that's okay. And maybe something should be complaint driven and maybe something shouldn't be complaint driven, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, I, I get the sense that we don't have, um, our code enforcement officer doesn't have much power to do much and you know even as much as going up and knocking on doors I'd love to understand that a little bit more and you know um, what, what, what's he allowed to do and not allowed to do is it is it is it staff guided or is it mm -hmm. legal is it a legal issue I just you know be be curious but yeah uh, and so is the idea then on to to do one and two kind of have the meet the third meeting with the uh, with people from the town and then submit something to the board on one and two is that the I know I think we I think we we've talked tonight we'll talk again next meeting we'll meet with residents about the stuff we've talked about as relates to one and two see what I mean it's sort of what do you think? What are you guys thinking about this? Is our list right? I'm guessing it will be, but you know, is, is the list look good to you? I just want to hear what people have to say, and then I think it's coming back to us to now. Okay, this is what the resident and encourage residents to come and you know participate in our future meetings. Uh, maybe there's another one that's a sit, sit around work session. Maybe it's public comment. Maybe it's somewhere in between. You know, so. Um, but, but with that time frame, we're looking at probably August before we'd make a recommendation to the board. Yeah, I had, um, I had, I had actually seven meetings, so that would probably put us well into, if not even, might even be September. I mean, I had, so I, what I laid out, and if, we, if it goes faster, great, was this meeting tonight, education next week, residents, or not next week, two weeks, residents two weeks. Meeting four was discuss the things that came out of um, meeting two and three, formulate a list and a plan of action items, discuss priorities, you know, invite the public again, finalize that stuff. Um, meeting five, um, work on, on action items. Uh, meetings five and six, work on action items and formulate our recommendations and, you know, meeting seven, um, you know, finish them up and send them to the board. So there's. But I thought we were going to do them one. I thought we were going to do them one at a time. I, I thought at the beginning. That oh, that I could be. We were going to go more. Yeah. Like, try let's to just pick off a few of these and, and try to move them a little yeah. faster. Well, right. because I thought we wanted to, because I, I liked someone's idea. I don't remember, but let's get it to them and see what the board thinks. You're going down the wrong path. Oh, I here. see. Just get get a get one. Well. I think getting one and two. I, I liked your idea of one and two. Get some feedback from the public and then submit one and two to the board to say. I just don't me. see. I think if we try and bring all of these, all of these topics, even in one or two public meetings, we are right. not no. going no. to no. get enough meaningful feedback to then turn around and generate any realist. I mean, this is a huge, huge, yeah. huge list. And I think I agree with that this should be one and two. I mean, that this. The, the, just oh, okay, doing right. this on one and two, I don't think we're gonna. No, I, I don't think we can address the marketplace and Marshall Road. I mean, potential we could do one and two, and 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 just do that over the next two months or three uh, months. Yeah. I mean, I I'm not too worried about transit oriented development yeah. coming forward to us in August. And if it does, then our priorities yeah, change, no, right? I think that's, you know, yeah. um, okay. But go after these couple items, and I also think that that we that the town board will probably pay attention to these meetings. I know there are a couple of board members that will absolutely pay attention to these meetings. Um, and we could also just, you know, come up at public comment or even get a short um, few minutes on the town board agenda and just say, want to make sure this is this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't know how far out we schedule study sessions or work sessions. If that might be an option to, to, 
talk with them maybe about it because like a combined yeah like a combined work session again if they are interested well we've talked about doing more of those um, a bit more frequently. regarding like once we come forth with you know what hey here are some potential recommendations where we're you know for for amending the right. development standards if we could talk through them that way or if then you could I don't know the best way to kind of communicate that to them for some policy direction of yes, we're in favor of an ordinance or we could certainly try to get it on a work session. Um, that might be. I mean, that's easy. It's clearly the you know most direct yeah. dialogue that you'd have with them. Uh, the work sessions are kind of tricky, you yeah. know, depending on the schedule because they don't occur every time. And then when they do occur, like we've got two scheduled that I sent you guys updates yeah. for. Well, on, it would um, be a different way to. And get some policy direction from council because we can't I mean we don't necessarily draft the ordinance right so and I can't we can't really you know what you I mean? would make a motion or a recommendation and we would kick it up to the board and, and I think that you'd somebody would want to attend from okay. Planning Commission that meeting to see you know ensure that Explain if they had any it. questions clarify where you guys are coming from you know and, and see what see if you can get some direct feedback you know because it sometimes depending on the agenda they may you know discuss it and they may have other priorities that they need to get to that night and not and have read it but not really have got to discuss it so if it doesn't get discussed you may want to follow up the next meeting or you may just want to show up at the first meeting to see you know what their thoughts are on you know ask for feedback or whatever so but the work sessions I mean we can certainly try that route I just know yeah, that the are full. they're t I mean they've been difficult to get like even the development review like concept plan work session schedule one schedule for July no I guess one schedule for I think the end of June and one scheduled for the like the tenth of July or something. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, it, that probably means that there's not another work session until mid July or August. But that may be when you guys are ready to present. You know, and I don't know that your uh, meeting outline isn't unrealistic. I mean, like yeah. six or seven meetings to get to a polished recommendation might be for for, what a couple items. for even the couple of items might be what we. Especially if you want this iterative process where you're informing or getting some feedback from the public and then discussing and then revising or you know whatever so and then eventually we're gonna also develop and review yeah. uh, things that are gonna tie up the agenda but not not on the radar at this point so I think uh, in July we're certainly gonna have a couple but so I think that sounds great I think yeah. we made a lot of progress tonight I'm wondering then if maybe for our next meeting we can zero in on the these two items right items one and two and yes. yep. just try and <coughs> yep. I agree. kind of dig into those and see if we can come up with even recommendations out of one meeting I don't know that maybe it'll take more than one meeting but yeah I just really feel like I want to get the public's feedback on you know this stuff and would I mean there may some things may just come out of there that just change our whole <laughs> so do you envision you know. so if that's the case then I would argue we have public meetings before we sit and talk so do you envision then I mean if we're ready to go with you know if we are going to break these apart mm -hmm. and you'd rather have public input first then I think we could potentially schedule a you know or encourage public to attend sooner and then that could help inform this character discussion it could I mean I had this meeting three but we yeah I mean we could consider making it the next meeting but it uh, depends on how comfortable you guys are with the standards I mean I think I that know. you're your perspective on getting yeah. like some um, other jurisdiction you know like just some context to mm -hmm. what we have what's allowed and then what other yeah I was just thinking I, I just yeah I wanted to have some time to understand what we have what we can do what and who knows I mean we may find out that, that some of the other towns aren't going the direction of protection and I mean it might be nice to see if we could find a town that sort of took the opposite approach right and just let them bulldoze the town and you know build whatever they want, right? And well, you know, just turned it. I mean, you know, I don't think that's where the neighborhood wants to go by any means. But it would be interesting just to you know understand what different towns have done and understand what we can and can't do, and make sure we're all comfortable with the zoning that's there, what the reality is. I mean, if somebody comes up, so what are we going to do with that industrial, that you know, that light industrial? I'd be nice if we could all fairly comfortably say <laughs> we're not too worried about it because you know because of setbacks and da 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 I mean you know if, if we all look at it and say you know that's that's not a big concern for us because of A B and C then people become comfortable with that and we, we don't worry about it right it, it, it gets settled down right this is that we're all comfortable being able to answer questions that might come up and um, 
and that we're clear on why we're going the direction we're going and so you know. when we have this public meeting then do we want to get to the point where we have um, some potential recommendations for the public to react to or do we want to leave it as an open-ended dialogue just to hear whatever it is they have to say I was thinking somewhere in between right. maybe or both. yeah a little bit yeah I, I'd like to put some context around the meeting um, you know it, it, and um, present the number of the issues that that have we've heard our neighbors talk about let them even bring up some of the issues and see how they fit into the things we've talked about or or not mm -hmm. right um, maybe we can react to those a little bit from a probably less of a recommendation standpoint and more of a factual standpoint you know this is this is what our code allows us what it doesn't allow here's what can and can't happen right. um, those those types of things um, like to find out what people are thinking about what things are bothering people in mm -hmm. town um, and I'd like to keep it efficient right I want to try to minimize the you know long rants if we can yeah, yeah. I mean I think yeah. it's just a little bit of a framework of kind of what's on yeah. the table you know what can realistically happen based on, you know out of this discussion and yeah. not to say we're not going to get to this other stuff later but yeah. you know yeah, I, th I think Commissioner Richie's right. We need to give some some sort of parameters because otherwise we'll end up talking about people's trash cans in the alley. Yeah, and, and how I, they don't like the neighbor doing that. If know? it's moderated well, like, we can capture those. We especially, if, I don't know if we can get somebody from staff that could keep a, a, a flip chart list of stuff. I mean, sometimes just saying, "Look, yes, that's a little outside of the scope of this meeting. It's on the list." And we'll keep it on the list. Promise. You know. I mean, we'll just let's let's. Goes in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I guess I'm. You know, I'm just thinking. Because stuff's going to come out. There's no way. Stuff is going to come out, but I think if we don't yeah. keep it, keep it on somewhat track. Somewhat yeah. framed. Yes. Yeah. We're not going to get yeah. any meaningful information yeah. that yeah. then helps. I think potentially. Yeah. Um, you may even want to focus your two topics when it goes to the public. I mean, yeah. considering the amount of feedback that. In two, especially if you're looking at like the reducing cut to traffic that's and proposing and proposing like Fourth Street being cut off, uh, that's the same conversation they had last night, and it took two and a half hours, you know, for right. Waldona. So, yeah. uh, but maybe that's a conversation that, you know, if if you're going to make a recommendation on that next next meeting, then that goes to tra traffic and safety committee, and they handle that, and you focus on. One, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I who knows how that's gonna. I think it's a really meaningful and probably fairly lengthy meeting, just solely on residential development standards. I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, I mean, if the community cares yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, and if it's information collection and not problem solving, because that that you know, it's really easy to head down a rabbit hole of trying to solve the problem and get everybody's ideas of how to fix the problem. If our focus is on figuring out what the problems are. And tr trust that you're going to get to come to some future meetings and talk mm -hmm. about what your ideas to solve them are. Mm -hmm. That's not for tonight. Tonight we're trying to gather this information, get a good sense about how important it is, find out what other things it leads to, and 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 not try to you know come up with recommendations. Everybody's ideas of how to fix the problem, right? Or or if you fix the problem this way, then that, that's going to cause this to happen, and blah blah. I mean, those are things we want to work on, but I don't see that as the point to this meeting it feels like the point to this meeting is to find out what people are concerned about um, talk more about issues that have arisen over the last few years in town and are you speaking broadly or are you speaking solely are you speaking are you envisioning kind of a broad hey all issues in original spirit or are you thinking no like, that I think that related, that fit to, related to one and okay. two yeah yeah related to one and two I think other things are going to come out I don't know. or related I think, to one I think yeah and we Stephen's yeah. point I mean, TSC maybe can handle. Well, character and livability kind of fall in there, but yes, I agree that cut through yeah. is different. Maybe cut through does need to 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 sit separate because if it's on that line item, because preserving character and livability falls a lot into the development standards. Cut through traffic is fits there too, I guess. Kind more, of that's more transportation. Is your mic on? Yeah, I don't know. No, thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, it might be an interesting thing to try and figure out how to develop some sort of survey or feedback device to try and gain input from folks in this part of town as to what they think the character of original superior is you know so just how 
do we try and you know? How my do we try my gut, my gut says we will never come to a character conclusion. I I just I can't even imagine how you're going to come to a. I mean, the character is eclectic, and <laughs> you know it, it's it's so. So it's if we so can't define it, then why is that number two on our list? Yeah, I'm just I mean, wondering, you know, like. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'd like to talk. I'd love to hear what people think about character. I, yeah. Yeah, I'd be interesting. I, I just well, I when it comes up, I, 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 I haven't said that by the way. That's not my line item. I, preserving character. I mean, we added on to ours. It looks I'm totally different now. Mm -hmm. I, the, the guy next door moved his house from Conoco. That. You want to just know, leave it as preserving livability. Maybe livability then, livability. if we feel like we can't okay. define character. <coughs> preserving character might have been my, mean, my phrase. Else. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's a neat idea, but we don't really have a very distinctive. Right. Well, I, I, I agree with you. I would call it eclectic. I, I think the purpose behind that was not to have the the infill lots and and the, the redevelopment mm -hmm. of old, original town end up with a lot of duplexes, because th that can, is that yeah. is the cheapest well, scalability around. I think we could if we took. I mean, I think it is possible to try and so try that, to get a sense of, of what the, the character the preserving or the what character, the character yeah. desired Just character all is. All duplexes and right. yeah. you know, half the town is owned by real estate investment trusts that are yeah. that are yeah. just renting properties like crazy. Yeah. Um, that's what I think I meant about preserving the, the yeah. character. So the single family yeah. character yeah. or preserving the residents? Preserving zoning, zoning and scalability is what it, you know, or zoning and scale, probably. I mean, zoning and scale. It, it's because the Maple Street homes are just, from a scale standpoint, they're just a lot of home yeah. on a very long, skinny lot, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, but again, to Stephen's point, making sure we understand all the reasons that, with that, we don't like those homes is, is important as well. Well, what we're looking for or what you're trying to achieve with development standards. I mean, yeah. that's the first thing I think yeah. you yeah. want to figure out in order to change them is what yeah. mm -hmm. what may be wrong. Is it height? Yeah. Is it lot coverage? Is it, you know, what is it? So. Yeah, is it a massive wall up against the side of your house, right? <laughs> you know, it's, or it's, yeah. room enough for a yard to have grass. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, lot coverage. Yeah, lot coverage. I mean, I think character is important i think trying to and i don't know that we can get it into this nice little you know sound bite sentence mm -hmm. and it is what's in the comprehensive plan i mean those are the words in the comprehensive plan right. well and maybe that's Nobody's what we rely on well it, but, i mean i think that you, if you did a survey of the town mm -hmm. and you figured out certain aspects of it like you know single story versus yeah. two story sure. or how many lots are you know how many single family homes are developed on two lots versus mm -hmm. one or three lots versus one or whatever the case may be like how big is an actual developed lot yeah. is it really 7,000 square feet or is the average 14,000 or you know something mm -hmm. different because of how it developed I think then you get to some idea of what I mean just numerically what what do we have in town like we have X amount of lots and we have X amount of single family residences or resident residential units in general and you get to density and yep. you know what do we actually have in town so you have some parameters it may not be everyone's built at 20 20 feet from the front property mm -hmm. line and five feet from the side or whatever but you may have some parameters that give you some guidance as to what the character or some character or some similarities mm -hmm. you know so but that would be a study in and of itself that's where it gets um, at yeah. like yeah. Oh, okay that's yeah I mean that's a lot of work and that's a lot of it, you know, potentially could be. Some it could be, or you could break it up, you know, amongst, you know, the whole mm -hmm. commission and start looking at that certain aspects of it or something. So, yeah. but. Awesome. No, I, think, I think it would be really helpful to try and, you know. Get your head around. Yeah. To try and get, if, if we're talking about potentially changing standards, you know, what are the problems? What are our goals? And otherwise, I think we're just kind of doing it in a vacuum. Right. You know, if we don't have kind of a target that we are driving toward, um, I think the plan would be better, I think, but, or the, the result would be better. Um. So if we're talking about a meeting, a third meeting, so we have the 6th, we have a meeting on the 20th, we, it's the next meeting on the 11th of July? Because it won't be the 4th. When is, is the it? first meeting in it's July? It's first and third, right? It is, but you're right. I mean, we'd have to look into it. I'd have to see how we've done it when we've had a holiday like that in the past. Because I'm not here on the 18th. I'm I can't in come Vermont. on the 18th. Yeah. Uh, it will probably be July 11th, but uh, I will confirm. 
could we request that? Is that does July 11th work for everybody here? Works for me. Mm -hmm. Works okay. For me. It's uh, we're <clears throat> we're not on my calendar, well, which doesn't mean much, but um, <laughs> I keep Phyllis. close track. I have a tight schedule, so okay. um, there's nothing on the evening of the 11th, okay. July 11th. So June 20th and then July 18th for the next two meetings? July 11th. July 11th, July 11th. sorry. July, yeah, July 11th. I, I wrote 11, I just said <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what my problem is. Right. We have a concept planning meeting the night before, on Monday the 10th. Monday the 10th, okay. Yeah. Relating to the residential development in the town center with dinner. So and then, but then I we wouldn't. So that would be the only July meeting. Did you say we we probably have some? We'll see. I mean, I have nothing July scheduled July firm 25th. yet, but yeah, we're supposed to. So we because July eighteenth would be our regular meeting, right? Correct. Right. right. It'd be the third. So we would not have that one. No, we would okay. likely probably have that one, but we'll so see. You probably will. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And you, you two are said, out. I'm out. Here, I'm out that here. night. Yeah. I have city council yeah. that night. Um, yeah, I'll be out the 18th through the, for the last two weeks of July. Um, <coughs> well, I think we've got a you know a little bit of a roadmap here, which okay. I think um, yeah. feels good. Yeah, I think the next meeting we, we spend a lot of time reviewing the document, everything that you're presenting. Or I'll send it out us, ahead of time right? to you so you guys, if you have time, yeah. you know, if you don't. Um, and we can discuss all the information there and then kind of put together some parameters that we could kind of guide the residents when they come in and start talking and we can help kind of define, yeah. you know, have something for up on the board or something that kind of defines a little more specific what we're looking for. Input. So we do steer them away from saying, I don't like the, you know, and stuff that goes down the rabbit hole. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, if it makes it easier to communicate, I might send some PowerPoint slides to you ahead of time, just maybe with some of this stuff that's on the spreadsheet, just that we could put it up. That'd be just, great. Just to. And I can send out, Commissioner Momot's already asked for the um, zoning map that we showed earlier, so I'll send that out to everybody and I'll send you guys the okay. either the link. It's kind of tricky. Um, because it's like a bunch of tables that have their own charts within them, but I, I'll send you the link to the development standard. And if I can just cut and paste, maybe I'll do that into a PowerPoint as well, so you guys can see what the uh, low density residential zoning requirements are and medium density residential as well. And then Lisa can build off <coughs> that for oh, the other you. jurisdictions. <coughs> yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Reset. So, um, so. Actually, um, you, you would have had a right to comment in the beginning. Have you heard anything that stimulates some thought that you'd like to get yeah. out while you're here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, you can come up. Yeah, just come up. I don't know There's if that the, mic's my on. My name is Al Nodine. Can you push Nodine. the button on the mic? Oh, sorry. Yeah. There's a little button in the middle of the microphone. It should be green. Uh, down, it down on the base. Needs. Right down here. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know when it drops down. Oh. It drops on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Al Nodine. My wife is Ronit. We live on 6th in Coal Creek uh, Crossing. So what I say is I'm going to try to be sensitive. I'm sure that was a debatable topic to build 53 homes there. <laughs> so I don't want to come in here and say, well, now I want to change everything. But first of all, is it Mr. Cool? Great uh, conversation. I support what you're saying. The two top items are very important, at least for us, because we're on 6th, and we're talking about the RM, and uh, I think it was RI. R, uh, yeah, the light industrial R. Yeah, so, right, so we are very interesting because our, our backyard is there. Okay, uh, yep. But I'm also not against developing. I get that too. So, uh, you know, but again, I don't want five stories there I'm sure it's not allowable anyways to begin with but single homes and, and stuff like that and the mr. Malia yes. sorry, thank you for your comments on the the road all of these things are very important mm -hmm. 
to us, even in that community. I think we have a very strong community of 53 people. Now, not all 53 people will come here probably because people on 8th and Charles Street may have no interest because it's not going to affect them immediately, but people on 6th will probably come and join. So that's just, you know, food for thought there. Um, one thing I would like to highlight just a teeny bit is I'm an avid cyclist, so mm -hmm. McCaslin, I think you've seen it on, on the weekend, is very uh, busy with cyclists running through there. And if we do make it a busy roadway, the recommendation would be let's make sure we, if we can, I shouldn't say make sure that's incorrect, if we can, put a wide uh, path or a wide uh, shoulder so that the cyclists could ride there. That would be the only comment I would have. Um, do, you, do you mean Marshall or McCaslin? Uh, Marshall. Okay. No, because Mar you were okay. talking about, okay. I think, swinging yep. Marshall, right? Yeah, Marshall's really tight in there. A lot of, I mean, I bike too, and I come yeah. through Coal Creek because Marshall is, yeah, it's tight and curves and lots of traffic. Yeah, and so, yeah. and it, I know we, a lot of people use it, I, yeah. you know, for sure. <laughs> and even in our community there, there's probably about 10 of us that are cyclists, mm -hmm. and we go out there. But uh, that's it. I mean, I, first of all, it was very informative. Thank you for allowing us to stay. And um, looking forward to the third meeting. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being engaged. It's great. Yeah, um, if you want to leave me your, your card, I can put you on my list or let Debbie. Do you know Debbie? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's our neighbor right across the street. Okay, so we'll, yeah, tell Debbie to either, either that or tell her to send me your info. Okay. We, we see her a lot. So. All right, that's how we found out about this meeting. Okay. Didn't Good. realize it was a working meeting, but it was yeah. very inner. You're always welcome Informative. to come, so thank you for Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So we learned a lot. I don't know how many Character. My name is Ronit Nodin, and I live on sex. So to me, character, it's actually, it's very, what is the word I'm looking for? The architecture, not a cookie cutter, the opposite of any cookie cutter. I know we are. We're coming from Rock Creek, so we're coming from one big cookie cutter community. We bought in Cold Creek because there were single story homes. That was very attractive. We liked the location. But when I looked in the, there were about six different floor plans. And at first, we were one of the first to get in. Uh, we, I've been told you cannot do the same roof because your neighbor already have that and we were number four. And then all of a sudden, Remington sort of allowed everybody to do any kind of brick they wanted, so everybody ended up basically with the same choice. And the roof, it didn't matter anymore, and the colors were very similar. And that's kind of lost the character to me. Mm -hmm. And everybody chose three different floor plans. So when going into the town, I love the individual and different architecture. So if somebody wants to do a Victorian, let's do Victorian that stands next to a bungalow or plantation, just to, to have diversity. And to me that's, I know we're going a lot to Canada. We, I have family in Toronto area. So when we go to small towns, they have very diverse architecture and it's beautiful. It's very manicured, it's really quaint, and that's what I would like to see in Old Town Superior. Less of the medium density, I think everybody agreed that that's kind of, it's hard to swallow when you have a lot of traffic, when you have uh, a lot of people in a small lots or in the small areas. Yep. That's fine. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, with that in mind, we'll close our session. All right.
before it shuts down fast. I'd like four yeah, of those peanut bar ones. <laughs> Maybe we can just all individually get to know more. And just we, we like the idea of testing the shutdown of four. Absolutely. Well, I think it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And plus, it, it sort of <coughs> becomes a dividing line between. Yeah, it creates a nice the retail barrier. industry <laughs> and old town re residential. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah. let's affect some change. Let's see what happens. Yeah, exactly. See who we piss off. We, like we can walk in two great at the same great time. Great place to do it. And yeah. What, what's the risk? It's temporary. Yeah. Let's see you how take it goes. No, it's, it's, it's an experiment. You let the fire department know first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. Right. Right. Yeah. Although their fire trucks are going to fly right through. Right. They're welcome to drive through the park to get to my house. That's the fastest way. That's fine. I love that idea. Can we do that on Yaro? Can we do that on Yaro? <laughs> yeah. Do that on uh, It was mostly designed on Yaro. Just a couple of places it was. Like Waldona and a couple of Jets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.